Welcome, my beaut and sweet and lovely friends of the literatures. I am Richelle Edens, and this is The Little Red Writer, as we are called in English. And usually I write my stories in Dutch, but this, this week's story I originally wrote in English, and then when I went to translate it, I felt things were getting lost, like the flow of the story and the rhythm of the story was getting lost. So. Because most people in the Netherlands do understand English, I decided to just skip the translation and read this story in English right away. Um, and the story is about two girlfriends, two lesbian girlfriends, who are going to the thrift store together in search of a new couch. And while they are going to the thrift store, um, one of them mentions uh, casually that her plans for having a family and that she doesn't want to carry the child in her own womb and that she instead is, is planning on building a crib with her father to, to create this little um, safe space for their little baby to be in. And her girlfriend gets a little bit upset by this because she, even though she wants to ha start a family and she wants to carry the child, she she gets upset that she wasn't included in the decision-making process. Um, I wish you a lot of joy listening to the story, by the way. And if you like the story, please leave a like and a comment because it would make me so happy and it would really, really help me with the algorithms. You're going to listen to the story, by the way. Written and performed by Richelle and Aidens. After three months, we moved in together. We were eligible for social housing and the city had assigned us a tiny flatlet in an apartment building across the street from a coffee shop in a dusty old store that was open only on Saturdays and that sold repaired sewing machines. The neighbors all thought we were sisters and after a long conversation, Rosa and I decided to keep it that way. Although the mother of the immigrant family that lived on the third floor did see me wrap my arm around Rosa's waist. But so far she hadn't said a word, maybe because she only spoke Turkish. I looked up on Google Translate how to say hello in Turkish, and now whenever I saw them I greeted them by saying Merhaba. It seemed to make them smile, although Rosa said I was being condescending and I shouldn't do that. A lot of our furniture we got from friends and family, including a colorful knotted rock that the friends from a dance company had found in a small fair trade store. I didn't much like the rug. It was lumpy and it hurt my feet if I stepped on the knots without wearing socks. But I liked Rosa, so I kept my mouth shut. Thanked her friends for stepping by and poured them the last bit of white wine from the fridge, which I drank sitting on the plastic folding chairs. The only thing that was still missing was a couch. So when it was Saturday, Rosa and I decided to go to the thrift store to find ourselves a couch. The thrift store was located in a big warehouse next to the store that sold cribs and car seats and other baby stuff. As we walked in the thrift store, Rosa was talking about having babies. She said we wouldn't use a sperm donor because she had enough gay friends in her dance company who wanted kids, so we could probably make an arrangement with them. They would just jerk off into a syringe or something and I would then squirt their sperm up my pussy. Why me? I asked, why not you? I looked around the thrift store. On the left there was a display of ceramic figurines, some old paintings stacked together against the wall, and shelves filled with kitchenware, glasses and mugs. To the right there were only racks of clothes. Rosa grabbed my wrist, pulled me towards the clothes and picked up a sweater with a little puck wearing a top hat. This isn't so bad, is it? She said, putting the sweater in front of her torso. I mean... It's ugly, but there's no reason people can only wear ugly sweaters ironically during Christmas. Irony isn't limited to the jewel tight, it's there all year round, isn't it? I nodded. Why would I be the one getting pregnant? I asked. She shrugged. I'm a dancer. If I get pregnant, my career is over. Besides, I assumed you wanted to share that physical bond with your baby. I'm not scared of missing out on that. I bond very quickly with children anyway. My nieces already feel like my stepdaughters, you know? Sometimes I even hope my sister gets in an accident or something, so I can take them in and I don't have to return them to their mother. 
I don't mean that as a nasty thing. Of course, I want my sister to be alive, and I'm not ready to financially support three little girls, but please don't think I wish my sister and my nieces harm or anything. I'm just telling you to illustrate how much I love those little munchkins. Besides, my father has already promised me to help me build a crib from scratch, so that way I'm also providing some safe surroundings for my child to sleep in. Wow, I said. There was a lot to unpack there, a lot to discuss, and the middle of the thrift store didn't seem like the right place to have that conversation. Look at this, Rosa said. She pulled out a purple cotton dress that was way too big for her. She was pinching in the waist to make it a better fit. It could work, she said. Wow, I said again, shaking my head. I know, right, she said. My father is really supportive. My mother took a bit longer to come around, but my father was immediately on board. Asking me what I need and how he could help, and then we made that pact about building that crib together. By now, my mom is making quilts for my nieces, so I'm guessing she'll make one for our little baby bean too. I ran my finger over some silk blouses. There was a white one, with elaborate, embroidered wildflowers on the collar. I tried to imagine what kind of person would actually wear this in a non-ironic way, in their day-to-day -day life. The furniture and the couches are upstairs, Rosa said, gesturing to a spiral staircase in the back. But if you want to stroll around downstairs some more, that's fine by me. You can find some funny things here. And if you're in luck, something pretty too. Don't you think you should have discussed it with me first? I asked while heading for the staircase. Rosa shrugged and shook her head. Why? How? I didn't even know you back then. She playfully pulled on my hair and looked at me with a beaming smile. I wanted to kiss her. Or at least I needed to feel her arms around me so I knew she cared about me. But we were in public, so we couldn't. We probably shouldn't even be talking so loudly about who would carry our future baby either. I wrapped my arms around myself and held my own shoulders. It was not as reassuring and comforting as an actual hug, but it provided some of that cuddly pressure. I don't think we have to worry much about the color, Rosa said, pulling up a picture of the rock on her phone. A lot of colors will match. Besides, I don't mind a bit of an eclectic interior. However, I think it would be practical to get a futon or at least a three-seater sofa. You know, so friends can crash on our couch. Yeah, fine, I said, nodding. But what if I don't want to get pregnant? You don't? Rosa said, lifting her eyebrow a bit. You said you wanted kids. I do, I said, I do, but I... I sighed. I didn't quite know how to verbalize what I was feeling inside. Eventually, a few years from now, I wanted to get pregnant and I wanted to have children. But I wanted to walk that road together, to go over the options and to discover and discuss the route we would take together. There was a store cleric coming towards us. He asked what we were looking for and if he could help us. He looked from me to Rosa and Beck, as if he tried to figure out how we related to each other. We're roommates, I said a bit crabby, and we don't need help, we're just looking. For a couch, Rosa said. Couches are over there, the store cleric said, pointing to the obvious section. Thanks, sweetie, Rosa said. She started walking towards the sofas, and I had no option but to follow her. Don't be rude, she said to me when we were out of hearing distance. They hired a special kids here, didn't you see his badge? What badge, I said. Why are you so grumpy all of a sudden? Rosa asked. What's wrong with you? She looked around and then she grabbed my hand and briefly placed a kiss on my fingers. You know I love you, she said. I know, I said. Her touch had already made me milder. I know, it's just... I feel like you just told me we were going on a road trip, but you've already decided the destination and the route we were going to take. Like, you telling me that we're going to Montreal without asking me if I want to go to Florida. What's in Florida? Rosa asked. Besides bugs and tornadoes and that vlogging family you follow on YouTube. I don't want to go to Florida, I said. It's a metaphor. I know, I mean... 
What's the Florida of having babies? Rosa asked. Forget about Florida. I just want to be involved in the decision-making process, I said. Rosa frowned. You get to pick the snacks, she said as if she was making a compromise. The snacks and 50% of the music. Everybody knows those are the most important in any road trip. You know, it's not about the destination or the route. It's about having fun along the way. Singing at the top of your lungs and eating crisps for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Okay, I guess, I said. But what are the snacks and the music of getting pregnant? I see three sofas I like, Rosa said. She pointed to three different couches. Let's give them all a try. She walked towards the first one and plumped down into the pillows. She wriggled a little butt back and forth in between the cushions, and I could already see ourselves snuggling up together, watching TV. Maybe share an elongated kiss during the credits. She would gently stroke my hair and hold me by the nape of my neck. I picked up a little hair from one of the pillows. It looks like the previous owners had cats, I said. That wouldn't work for your allergies, right? Maybe we could clean it up with a carpet beater or something. We don't have a carpet beater. We should get one, she said. I shook my head. Fine, we'll check out the other two, Rosa said. What are the snacks and music of getting pregnant? I asked her again. She slouched down on the second couch and dangled with her foot over the armrest. The shop cleric looked at us for a moment and I feared he was coming our way to tell us that laying on the couches wasn't allowed. He didn't do. With the cap of his pen in between his teeth he wrote something on the label of a coffee table. Maybe that it was indeed a coffee table. I don't know, Rosa said, still all sprawled out over the couch. Her hair was fanned around her face and she was looking at me with twinkling eyes. Maybe shopping for baby clothes or picking the wallpaper or... Or picking the music box for next to the bed. And the snacks are obvious, right? That's the pickles with ice cream and bacon and sushi or whatever weird craving you're going to have. What do you think about this couch? She pushed herself up into a sitting position and then she patted on the couch next to her. I briefly sat down and scrunched up my nose. No, I said. Why not? It's too... There's... Too much spare pillows, and why it is impossible to keep clean. Look, look, there's already a stain there. Who knows where that's from, and it's too deep and too soft. How can a sofa be too soft? Rosa asked, tilting her head a little bit. I got a backache, I said, and you'll get a backache too. As a professional dancer, you can't afford a backache from sitting on too soft a sofa, can you? Fine. Rosa said, we'll check out the last one, but that better be it. She walked all around the sofa. No stains, she said, no cats. She pressed her fingers into the seat, and decently firm. Okay, forget about the road trip metaphor, I said. Done. Rosa put her thumb in the air and gave me a very charming smile. Her hair was still a bit messy from laying on the other couch, but her cheek had the cutest pinkish tinge, and the most beautiful sprinkle of freckles. On stage, she hid those freckles behind a layer of makeup, but not with me. I was allowed to see those freckles. I just... I want to be involved in the decision-making process, I said. We're talking about it now, aren't we? Rosa said. It's not that we're going to have children tomorrow. There's plenty of time to figure that stuff out. Come, try out this couch. There's a decision you're involved in, picking out a new sofa for a new apartment. She sat down and bounced up and down a few times. Perfect, she said. I think we found a one. I shook my head. You haven't even tried it. Come, sit with me. She tucked on the bottom of my shirt and tried to pull me closer. No, no, I said. There was nothing objectively wrong with the couch, but I still didn't want to try it. Why not? Rosa asked. What's wrong with this one? I tried to find something wrong with it. A loose seam, another stain. I even put my nose up against the pillow, but the previous owners didn't smoke. Or if they did, they'd adequately remove the smell from the fabric. 
Rosa got out her phone again and looked from the picture of the rock to the couch and back. Yes, that will work, don't you think? Let's call the guy. She put her hand up in the air, but the shop cleric didn't see her. What should I call him? she asked. I can't just yell, hey you, can I? Don't call him at all, I said. We haven't decided yet. We haven't? she asked. Maybe I don't want the couch, I said. You don't? Rosa squinted while she looked at me. There were little wrinkles next to her eyes. You just assumed I wanted to have a couch, but we never discussed the other options. What other options? Rosa asked. Do you mean beanbags or something? I didn't want to be there any longer, and I walked back towards the spiral staircase. Hey! Rosa yelled at me. The store clerk looked at her too. Apparently just hey would have worked. Where are you going? she asked. I'm going to buy a Twix at a rest stop next to the gas station, I said. What do you mean? Rosa asked. For real or within the metaphor? She was leaning over the back of the couch and ran a hand through her hair. As she watched me walk away, I saw the store clerk approaching her. You have listened to the story, By the Way, written and performed to you by Rochelle and Adens. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you enjoyed this story. And yeah, please let me know if you want me to do more stories in English. If you happen to be a native English speaker who doesn't understand any Dutch, perhaps. And also, if you like this story, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like and leave a comment and tell someone about it. Tell a friend, a mother, a father-in-law, an uncle, a co-worker, a neighbor. Share the stories with people you know and people who might appreciate them as well. Um, don't forget to subscribe because we'd love to have you again next week. For now, I wish you a very pleasant night and a very, very pleasant week. And I hope to see you next time with the next story. Bye-bye.